Hello there, my name is Lanius and I'm back, I guess. So, for a, quite a while I was uh, talking a lot on Mastodon at least about how great Mike OpenSUSE micro OS is and I'm going to do a long term review let's say but of course as always as I do I already distro hopped away <laughs> and I guess I will tell you why in a little moment so I already have mm, a virtual machine set up for the installation just to show you the installation but I already ha also have a one already set up so maybe I will rename this so I won't delete the wrong one later so let's get going So, as you maybe know or not, microOS is basically mm, immutable tumbleweed. So, it's a rolling distro, but uh, it's immutable, like Fedora Silver Blue. There's now also uh, Universal Blue. Uh, Ubuntu is creating something immutable. Nitrox is immutable. Yeah, there's also vanilla OS, which is quite I wanna say popular, but I'm not really sure <laughs> But there were some videos about This particular OS recently, but today we are talking about OpenSUSE Also, I have quite uh, not the latest ISO here, so the newest uh, the newest micro os desktop already have some names the, the gnome version is micro os aeon and the kd one i don't remember <laughs> so i wanted to run through this installer mainly because it's not your typical uh, Calamaris or or whatever. I mean, Calamaris also. There's the one from from Ubuntu and one from Fedora, and there's also, of course, Yast, which is like everything tool for OpenSUSE. So as you can see, even here we have OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, because basically, mm, microOS is like pre-configured uh, tumbleweed with immutability and also some uh, few like customization because in fact you can create you can just install tumbleweed and set it up so that it's uh, it's just like micro os but here we just have it like from the start so as you can see there are a few options because micro os like mainly is meant for like container host so for some i don't know uh, embedded devices or or whatever but it also offers desktop which is just pretty nice which i will show you in a moment we're going with gnome i know i know gnome bad but uh, in my opinion gnome is pretty nice there's also kd plasma if you would want it anyway let's continue yeah super complicated password and at least yast just warns you that it doesn't like require to make some crazy password 
which you of course should do but it's just you know for uh, for some testing purposes so as you can see we have everything like set up by default not really many options because we already chosen like the mm, pre-configured one but we can change pretty much anything here it's pretty actually pretty easy to like set up uh, disk encryption we just go to the partitioning expert partitioner start with current proposal continue and we can just go to the um, better fs partition where we have the like all the sub volumes here and we can just uh, where is it edit encrypt device next and we can just encrypt that but I'm not going to do it I will just uh, go back here and accept the default options and yeah so the two supported desktop environments are GNOME and Plasma but I also tested XFCE it worked quite nice I also used i3 for a moment but uh, hmm. there were some little issues here and there but let me show you you can actually just go and choose whatever you want I mean I guess there is hmm. okay so there is quite less options than in um, than in uh, tumbleweed but we can customize it like we can uh, remove actually remove the micro as gnome desktop and we, we and, and i guess this way we will just get immutable tumbleweed mm. but we will keep the mm, containers runtime i guess anyway we're not going to customize it i'm just showing you there are some nice options here of course some more options which I'm not going to fiddle with so let's just actually I'm not going to install I'm going to abort and go to the micro OS I already installed so to make things faster also every time I was just uh, I was just you know thinking okay I will do the installation and show you every time something went really wrong so I prepared this time and here we are booting into OpenSUSE micro OS come on Put. As you maybe have cough, caught the glimpse, we ha we have uh, the latest kernel because of course it's based on Tumbleweed. So we basically have pretty uh, up-to-date rolling distro. So we have GNOME. there aren't really too many applications there which is I think it's pretty nice we have all that is needed the tweaks extensions manager so we can install extensions like a normal person not to the browser which is just pretty weird uh, yeah so let's see display settings they're already okay but I would like to go dark of course so it's also the newest gnome which is nice but it also is a little problematic 
and it is one of the reasons I actually have um, hopped away from the from the micro OS. Mm, okay, white terminal. Mm, 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 mm. Let's go with no dark. Also, why is it not using the dark theme? Hmm. That's weird. But anyway, so we have this micro OS, it's immutable, so we theoretically cannot install packages, but we can, it's just like less uh, intuitive, I guess. If you want to do it from terminal, we just use transactional update pkg in and we choose some package let's say of course neo fetch obviously that's the first thing we need on the system right but of course i'm already doing something that normal user would probably not do so go to terminal and run commands there so while this is uh, doing things which is a little slow but my internet isn't very good right now we also have software with pre-configured flat hub and this is the like main uh, main way of installing software here as you can see these applications are flat packs already they are installed like in like some welcome script or whatever and they are already there because as i said i already run this installation to avoid some uh, surprises so here we would only see like updates to the flat packs not to the packages because uh, I mean, the package manager is there uh, because what we do here, what the transactional update is doing, it's running the command to kit, to kit, which is transactional update kit. It creates a new snapshot from our current system, and in this snapshot, it's just running zipper which would if we run this we, without a, a, any commands it just runs uh, zipper dup zipper dupe <laughs> which uh, just updates everything and if we run it like this so this basically like transactional update pkg is the same like as zipper and then we have access to every other command like install like uh, remove like info like whatever but actually we can just search normally for for, for packages so zipper se or search and what do we want to search btop and we have btop we have some other packages also there are really a lot of packages and honestly we could just add some additional repositories because uh, it's not like the system is using some totally separate uh, package source which i might be wrong is the case with uh, fedora silver blue because they have uh, this rpm OS 3 and here we just have zipper that just uses tumble with repos so we can add new some other repos actually if I would be using uh, a laptop with laptop or a PC with 
with NVIDIA card, I would probably need to add NVIDIA repos, install the driver with zipper here, I mean with transactional update, and then the drivers would just be updated with the rest of the packages. So I kind of installed Neo Neo Fetch, but it is installed to the new snapshot, so it's not here. And a little confusing thing might be that if I would now try to install something else, like say BTOP, it would install it to the next snapshot. I mean, there is a warning. So if I would say yes here, the snapshot number like three or whatever would be created from current snapshot. So the snapshot to which we would boot after a reboot would be the one created now with the bit of installed but what we wouldn't get new fetch so I don't want that what I want to do is this continue pkg in bitop and now we are installing next package to the next snapshot so the snapshot we just created with installing NeoFetch. So now it's installing. So I guess I already explained how, how, how this works. So it creates the snapshot, it cheroots to this new snapshot, it runs zipper, it installs things or updates things. Also the updates are like uh, Pac-Man style, so either everything or nothing. If something goes wrong, the snapshot gets uh, discarded. So we always have a working system, basically. So, okay, let me show you that we have these new packages. We reboot. As you can see, it boots pretty fast. On my machine, it was booting a little longer, but it's because I had the disk encryption, which is not needed in a VM. And also maybe not really needed if you are using a PC. So as you can see, NeoFedge is installed. It's micro OS. The kernel is 6.3.7. We have nine flat packs, 1200 RPMs, GNOME 44. So it's pretty nice. And yeah, so let's talk about my experiences with micro OS. So actually, I was using it wrong. <laughs> I mean, the uh, expected way of using it is just to use GNOME or KDE Plasma. But of course, I was using XFCE first. Then I was using uh, I was using XFCE with i3 installed via distrobox which i don't recommend installing any package like window manager or something in distrobox especially if you're going to like mix it with some components from the host system because it gets really weird but I guess the main problem here is that sometimes just 
Exorg is doing weird things because of uh, starting from like container. I haven't tested it on Wayland, but I believe that many weird things like this doesn't happen on Wayland. But you know, actually, I'm not really sure if we are on Exorg or on or on, or on Wayland right now. It might be Wayland actually. Mm -mm. Okay, what I wanted to do? Oh, I wanted to show you the other big thing, I guess, for for micro OS. And honestly, most of the immutable distros are just uh, really talking or recommending distro box, which is really nice. And yeah, so it is also pre-configured, like I can just run this without, you know, adding anything, any command, like I, like, like just see. So it automatically creates a tumbleweed uh, container. So we get like just, uh, mm, just like environment from Tumbleweed, which we could use then to, you know, just install some things in CLI without really making any mm, changes to the base system. But I have a little mixed feelings, I guess. I mean, I really like this workflow. I literally, I'm running now, uh, open SUSE lib which is stable distro and it's uh, quite old honestly the package versions are not not the greatest let's say okay let's enter what the hell oh I am already in the container i'm stupid i'm in tumbleweed so here we just can do sudo su and as a regular user we have the access to the regular home di the directory but the rest of the file system here like if we go to the root it's not our system it's inside the container so we're pretty safe, I would say, but I'm not entirely sure if the host... Yeah, the host is mounted here, so... If it wasn't immutable, then we might maybe do something here, so it's not like very, you know, like sandbox or something but it never was the you know the point behind distro box it was literally the point to be able to quickly create like development environment or to install some application that requires this some specific uh, distribution like uh, actually i at some point created my own gtk team and there is this program called uh, Tmix, Tmix, whatever. But uh, at some point it stopped supporting Arc Team, Arc Team based themes. But I found an older version of this program that supported Arc Team. And I just created some. Uh, older Ubuntu version uh, container installed this Steamix program and just created the GTK team there and it just worked so it's quite cool but okay what I was saying so I said that I have a little mixed feelings about it but I mean this in the way that 
No. We are basically on immutable arch. Because uh, the tumbleweed ships packages really, really fast. I believe uh, quite recently they shipped like newest version of Plasma before even Arch Linux. But I might be wrong. I believe I've uh, read something like that and it might have been not really that recent, but but yeah. So honestly, we already have a lot of new, really new packages that we could just install if we weren't on an immutable distro. So why should we go with this? Actually, there are a few little reasons because like Arch Linux or even Tumbleweed, it might break. But I would say I haven't really heard about OpenSUSE breaking their distro, maybe because it's not like an enterprise company and Tumbleweed is literally a base for an enterprise product like MicroOS which only additionally is a, a a desktop. Mainly it's for something else, like right for some servers, for some embedded devices, etc. etc. That's why it has this uh, atomic updates and stuff. Actually, Tumbleweed also offers this actually. <laughs> well actually. So actually every open SUSE distro offers during the installation just choosing transactional update which makes it possible to just create like immutable uh, OpenSUSE lib immutable OpenSUSE tumbleweed which I already said and which this distribution basically is And I've lost my train of thought, what I was talking about. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, okay. I, I got it. So, I, I, was, I, I was of course criticizing Arch Linux for not being stable. <laughs> so, from time to time, Arch Linux just breaks. Because uh, there is some decision. Surely it has something to do with like some kernel options or with infamous grab problem. So, if you want like the newest desktop environment and your choice is either GNOME or KDE and you want a system that won't break, that won't just let you even break itself unless you will really, really try like, like I did installing some window managers via distrobox and running it with uh, xfce installed by transactional update and some weird weird things it will just work actually you could just uninstall gnome just like ev everything every you know graphical thing install like the window manager of choice install the set of packages you want of course you would probably need to reboot like 50 times while setting this up but the moment you will be done with it you will just have like a rock stable rolling distribution with uh, with quite a tedious way of installing things to the host so you could then just use distrobox for like some you know command line things and stuff <coughs> and that's it it offers you just really bleeding edge things no need to worry about updates because it's rolling also, it's not over complicated, it's just zipper with uh, better FS snapshots. But instead of like 
um, creating a snapshot before installing a new package. It just installs new packages to new snapshot and you have to reboot and that's it. And if something breaks, like, you know, you, you, like I was saying that, oh, you could basically make your own desktop totally from, you know, like i3, some other things and stuff, but, but you would realize that you uninstalled like too much and it just, just have broken. Then you can just boot to older snapshot <coughs> in grab. And you can try again. Of course, you could just do it in Tumbleweed without immutability and it would probably be less tedious. Just saying. But, you know, immutable distro have some advantages. Like it's, of, it's obviously more secure because I guess most of like things that could um, <coughs> do something to your system would rely on the ability to just you know write something to the root partition and it won't be able to do it because it's immutable i mean except or of course except like etsy some var and you know something that just running system needs to write to <clears throat> or you need to write to like Etsy you know configuration right you can configure the system of course <clears throat> but is it really mm, that great I mean I really like it but after going back to like not immutable distro I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the option to just install some stuff on the running system without the need to reboot. But what I see like uh, in this approach is it can, I mean, for now it's more like, you know, or some enthusiasts and stuff and uh, by the way distrobox creates a desktop file so we can just click tumbleweed here and we get a terminal in the distrobox which is nice and of course we could also install some graphical application but for this we have flatpak but what am i saying so in my opinion the um, of course now the immutable distros are more for like enthusiasts right because it's not really like widespread <coughs> but in the end i believe it would be it can be good approach for creating like uh, not breakable and more secure by default linux distributions for more casual users but of course there's some work to be done because yeah flatpak has its some problems like uh, sometimes you need to um, adjust some permissions because something doesn't really work well and yeah uh, if it's just a casual user they won't probably know like oh i installed this and that so it would be nice to have access to this and that directory like some videos or some other directory if you like some you install some i don't know a, a video editor or or, or whatever <clears throat> or like office suite and you have some some weird folder somewhere where you keep your documents not documents and suddenly you don't have really access to that and through portal it's like some temporary directory then you have to go again to that directory because it remembers some some weird mount point like inside of the flat pack and it's just weird actually i don't believe i don't believe i'm saying this but at in this 
regard snap is better because it's it doesn't complicate things that much for the end user but i think at some point it will get there or so another thing uh, mac os is basically an quote unquote immutable distro but uh, it's a like not really distro it's just a unix system with immutable root so i guess um, i guess we already see that that uh, some linux distributions and i believe gnome in a way it's kind of like mac os but honestly it's like mac os without the bad things about mac os i guess and yeah like mac os but good <coughs> And I believe it's like logical that only like desktop Unix system that's widely used is macOS. So it makes sense to kind of go in that direction. But but I'm not and I wouldn't say that it's. Uh, I mean the big thing here is that just Apple so Apple hardware has macOS on it. So. But anyway, so I'm not really sure if I, I if I have given like uh, um, justice to the micro OS here because it's really good. But uh, but it uh, I'm not entirely sure if you need this immutability. I'm not entirely sure but it has some nice like patterns I mean some workflows <coughs> like now I'm on open SUSE lib which is pretty outdated actually it's way way older than uh, mm, Debian stable which was r recently released I mean older it has older packages right the kernel itself gnome is also as you can see it doesn't look like 44 right yes because it's gnome 41 <laughs> but it has its mm, <coughs> its advantages it's older it has better compatibility with extensions as you can see I'm using the pop shell which I really like it's really nice but I was talking about the like workflow patterns which you could take from micro OS so I have this quite old uh, old and stable host system but I also have my basically development environment which is just Arch Linux here where I have the newest and the greatest uh, CLI tools NeoVim <coughs> Emacs <coughs> and pretty nice honestly actually I also have exported some of the things but I forgot it to export but which I'm not going to install on the host system because the host system uses the same configuration as the as my Arch Linux thing and I already had uh, some weird problems with micro OS having a little older uh, but version and it wasn't working it wasn't like interoperable with newer but from Arch Linux but it was mainly because I was just slacking with updating uh, my host so the best way is to just 
uh, my microphone is in the way so yeah but I don't want to export NNN I want to export BAT and as you can see it's green so it's there but it won't show anything because I haven't given any file there <coughs> so that's it like I, I believe what immutable distros can teach you as a user is to keep your host system as minimal as possible install like your bleeding edge things in this robox if something goes wrong like arch linux does something which uh, breaks uh, some systems it won't hurt you because you just have like very limited uh, user land in a container so you don't have the kernel you don't have the bootloader which usually is like the breaking point you just have some CLI utilities maybe some graphical programs <coughs> but you're fine you have your system there it's it's easier to, to update because you don't have like 3000 packages with some installed from a UR from source and it's just like cleaner workflow and I believe I will just keep doing it on whatever distro I will be but but of course it kind of misses the point if you are already like on a rolling distribution because you already have everything newest you can install pretty much anything there of course I'm talking about uh, OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed and Arch Linux because other rolling distros happen to be a little older maybe have less packages like Void Linux but yeah so my other point but it's maybe like a subject for another video that maybe rolling distros are not that much needed anymore I mean don't get me wrong they are needed but I prefer them in a container where I can just spin up new container install what I want them from you know the newest versions of things and keep my system like best stable of course there is a drawback but i already told about this that installing like desktop environment from distro box is pretty much impossible i would say and i mean it's not impossible but you will have problems believe me even with a window manager so the only drawback is that you will have older uh, older desktop environments older window managers also older kernel which not always is a problem it works fine with my you know AMD laptop <coughs> but yeah so I'm of course talking way for way 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 too long and I will be finishing it here and I haven't really explained why there is no camera but there is no camera in this in this video because I have bad light and yeah and it's like temporary but but guess I guess it will be back at some point I am back I don't promise to be like uh, posting too much maybe once a week maybe I don't know but I will be posting something to my to my website to my blog so you might might want to check it out it will be linked in the description so thank you for watching 
and I guess I will see you in the next one. Bye.